Well, Tokyo, it's been a long, hard-fought road for these two featherweights, who next step back on the glory stage to battle in an all-Japan finals of the Featherweight Slam World Championship Tournament. Yuta Kubo versus Masaaki Noiri! In the blue corner from Japan, Yuta Kubo! Well, what a final we have as Utah Kubo makes his way into the glory ring for this final bout, Stephen. And, and what what an incredible road to get here he took. Yeah, because he, he basically beat Chibian Lim by knockout, which is a big deal. And then, of course, he fought a guy that looked like the Energizer Bunny, uh, Gabriel Varga, but when he fought Kubo, Kubo, I mean, he, he faded, and Kubo made it happen, and he finished him as well. So uh, he really had a tough road to get here. It was not easy. Entering into the featherweight slam, Masaaki Noiri was the number eight ranked fighter coming in. Does the Cinderella story have one more upset in him? Well, I gotta tell you, if there be a breakout performer of tonight's festivities, it would be this man, stopping Liam Harrison and then defeating the number one seed and uh, Mosab Amrani, that is a very big deal. He hasn't shook up the world just yet, but if he wins this whole thing, he will. Knocking off number one and number three, without a doubt, that will shoot him up in the glory featherweight rankings. $100,000 is on the line in this fight. And here's how they match up on paper. Obviously, we've got the 19-year-old, but as we've seen all night, he's fought like he was 25 years old himself. Uh, Kubo has got the experience, though, especially in fighting in tournaments. And both of them have been in the ring for 14 minutes, so that will not be an advantage either way. about this 19-year-old's abilities. 
His record stands at 20 wins, three losses. He stands at 1.75 meters and he weighed in at an even 65 kilograms. He too represents Japan. Here is the amazing Masaaki Noiri. And your referee for this matchup, Ryogaku Wada. ね、キャッチ。はい、It's the Glory 8 Tokyo Featherweight Slam Finals. All Japan represented here tonight. Masaaki Noiri in the red gloves, taking on Utah Kubo in the blue gloves. And here we go. Low kick from Noiri. Fighters have already fought 14 total minutes. One of the toughest tournaments around. Low kick by Noiri, and again. This has been such a great night overall for uh, the featherweight division. And it's been a great night for Japanese kickboxing because we're seeing two of the best that I've ever seen face off in the finals. Oh, it's been a real trade from Tokyo. Ron Kruk and Steven Quadros here. The finals of the featherweight slam. Straight kick there by Kubo. Kubo is basically big brother in Noiri here. Uh, he's just pushing him around, using a psychological ploy to say, hey, I'm the boss. So Noiri looks so composed and so laid back. It's surprising for a 19-year-old kid. Yes, he's a little too laid back right now. He's, uh, Letting Kubo tee off on him just a little bit. I'm, I, I'm not saying you should answer fire with fire, but that's a good step with that uh, left hand. Yes, but Kubo comes back with the right. Knee from Noi Iri. A lot on the line. There's a kick from Kubo gets through. And a one-two. But it's countered by Noi Iri. Well, the interesting thing here is that they're both southpaws. So there's no advantage or disadvantage. Usually when you fight a southpaw, you fight an orthodox guy, it becomes sort of a messy situation. One minute to go in round number one. Coming out of the clinch, Noiri landed that right hook. Yeah, that was a good shot. It was a, a, a grazing blow. It didn't land. Boom, boom. Full force, but it did land. Right back is Kubo. Low kick from Noiri. Exchanging a kick for a punch. Kubo working the body. And now Noiri fires back. Kubo went three times with that right uppercut to the body and landed every single shot. Under 30 to go in round one. Combination by Kubo. Straight kick. And again the combination. Noiri fires back. Good shot. And down goes Noiri. Veteran move there by Kubo. Doesn't count, but slick. Oh, that was nasty. It was after the. It was a back kick to the groin, and the back kick is one of the most deadly weapons in fighting. And I don't. Oh, that was. That was awful. I mean, that was, I mean, it was unintentional. Second time tonight, 
that Masaaki Noiri has suffered a low blow, the first one coming against Harrison in his first fight of the night. Are you kidding me? He's really getting his manhood tested. Oh, man. And his cup tested, too. Oh, let's hope that Noiri can continue. Again, we saw it in the first fight. He took all the time he needed to regroup. But not only was that shot after the bell, but it was low. Yeah. So we take a look at the first fight with Harrison, who delivered right to the groin, and down went Noyeri. Oh, man, there are easier ways to make a living. And now we take a look in this fight, the spinning back kick right to the groin again, and down goes Noyeri. And to add insult oh, to injury, it was after the horrible. bell. So it was after the bell. Did the referee just give him a warning? As Noi Eri is in obvious pain, as the doctor looks on. This would be a very difficult way to end this incredible featherweight slam. All fight fans here in Tokyo are hoping that Noi Iri can get back up. The 19-year-old has been on an incredible run. And this doesn't look good, Stephen. No, it doesn't because we're in the middle of a match and so we can't really supplant uh, a reserve fighter in because this is the finals. Slowly working his way back to his feet. Oh. The Japanese fans acknowledge how tough this kid is. The youngest fighter in the tournament. Just hope he can continue in life. Oh, yeah. He's got a lot of life ahead of him. Doctors are over there. So we take another look here, Stephen. Yeah, it's, it's obviously, obviously after the bell. Great work there by our crew. You heard the bell and then he delivered the spinning kick. Obviously not intentional by Kubo. And this is, is tough to watch. The youngster has done so much to get here to the finals. Just hope that he can recover. We are hearing right now that if Noiri is unable to continue, it would be ruled a no decision. The last kick at the end of round one was a low blow. Masaki Noiri's cup has shifted and they are fixing it now. Please wait. Well, a cup shifting is the understatement of the year. 
Noi Iri taking two brutal low blows in this tournament. It's all Japanese final here at the Glory 8 Tokyo Featherweight Slam. They continue to work on Noi Iri. Okay, according to Core Hammers, the founder of the whole Glory uh, system. According to Core Hammers, uh, the founder of the Glory system, if it is after the bell, which it was, they will go to the judging of the first round, and that will uh, determine the winner. If uh, Noiri cannot continue. Well, great information there, Stephen. So we take another look at the shot he took in the quarterfinal rounds. Liam Harrison delivering the low blow. Makes it through the semis, and then here, the late shot and the spinning kick. And you can see our referee, Wada, was yelling to him right there. He heard the bell. But the kick was still delivered, and Noyiri went down. The word is... The word is that Noiri definitely wants to continue, but he uh, broke the, the strap on his athletic supporters, so they're going to have to replace that. That would be outstanding news. If Masaaki Noiri was able to continue and we check out here these are huge now Stephen the judges scores from round one so if he can't continue because the shot was after the bell he uh, Masaka Noiri would win on a split verdict here from the judges three judges to two but if he can continue then all bets are off and they're replacing his athletic supporter now so we may very well have a resumption of this round and this match well for the pain and suffering that Masaaki Noiri has gone through it's fitting that he earned that first round but again this is not how you want to see no. the glory featherweight slam world champion crowned and Kubo uh, doesn't want to win like this either. No. I mean, if, if well, he comes out there and he's got a depleted fighter from getting whacked in the groin not once but twice over the course of the evening, and, and both shots were devastating shots which would have put anybody down for the count. But this young man has been able to come back one time against Harrison and now hopefully come back again. This would, if he wins it, that's going to be like, come on. Like if super he human. wins it, this kid deserved it. A legend is born. Seriously. <laughs> he already came in as the number eight seed in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Knocked off number one, knocked off number three. Mm -hmm. Surprising everyone. Yeah. Except maybe himself. He and seemed so very confident yesterday when we were speaking to him at the fighter meetings. But yeah, very very calm. I, I mentioned that when he left. I said, this guy is 19? Yeah. Wow. He's, yeah, handles himself very well. Very mature, you know, very intelligent, very uh, relaxed. You know, and this is a lot on Kubo in this fight, too. You know, he is a veteran tourney fighter. He's been in four tournaments to date. But... If there is a criticism, some say that Kubo doesn't live up to potential a lot of times and, and really almost, I don't want to say chokes, but has some issues in those big fights. This would be a hard way for Utah Kubo to lose this tournament. Yeah, well, uh, on the choke.
and continue to go to work on Noyeri. And you got to wonder how long will they let this continue? If it is just a if it is just a equipment issue, but it's been about ten minutes that we've already waited. I'm not sure how long they will continue this. The good news is is that Noy Erie does look like he's recovered from the low blow. So he's standing up, and the fans here. At Ariaki Coliseum, acknowledge his toughness with a nice round of applause. Trying to shake it off. Well, you can't wait forever. Can you? No. Uh, Core Hammers just said that we're going to wait one more minute and then we're going to have to come to some sort of a conclusion here. As unfortunate as that situation would be. Oh, it most definitely would be a tough way to win the well, tournament. The mouthpiece is going in for Masaki Noiri. And they're moving the stool out of the way, so we are going to have a resumption of this fight. Incredible. This is going to be really unfortunate because he doesn't look so good. And once again, back here in Tokyo, we take a look at the low blow that floored Masaaki Noiri. We've had a lengthy delay, but it looks like this fight will continue. Incredible. Incredible is right back in at round two. Low kick by Noiri. We'll see if Utah Kubo tries to take advantage of things here and really come out firing. As you check out the scores from round one. Round one had Noiri winning uh, three judges to two. So it's a close fight. And apparently no penalty for the late low blow. Not only was it late, but it was illegal. Yeah, but it was accidental. Good point. It, it really was accidental. He didn't throw it to try and cheap shot the guy. High oh. kick by Masato oh. Noiri. Wow. This kid is tough. Two minutes to go in round number two. Big shot there, but blocked by Noiri. I think Kubo is going to be very careful with knees and low kicks. Referee separating the fighters. That shot looked dangerously close to being low from Kubo. Are you kidding me? That, that, that was a low kick. I know he's going to work on the legs, but... You've got to be careful at this point. We're under a minute 30 in round number two. Utah Kubo. Masahaki Noiri. Glory 8 Tokyo Featherweight Slam Finals. They're really swinging for the fences here. Regardless of what happens in this fight, these guys are going to meet again. I think we're going to see a, a big arch rivalry and maybe possibly a trilogy or, or more out of these guys, because these guys are both incredible. Without a doubt, Kubo delivered some knees there. The fighters clinch again. The, the Cooper to powers of Noiri are like, what, in Terminator 2, where the guy gets blown apart and he comes back together Just again? Just keeps coming back. It's like that. 
30 seconds to go, round number two. Kubo misses with a hook, but delivers on that hook. A couple of stinging shots there from Kubo. Yeah, Kubo is doing the better work here, and not surprising. I mean, we got to give Mariri a little bit of slack here. He's, he's had a rough night. Without a doubt, as round two comes to an end. How much does he have left in the gas tank for one final round? Third fight of the evening. Getting final instructions from his corner. Kubo looked good at the end of that round, but like I said, I, I can't be surprised because you're fighting a guy who's probably coming back from his worst day ever physically in his life. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be an easier way to collect a paycheck, that's for sure. But give a lot of credit to that man, Masaaki Noiiri. How tough is the 19-year-old? And that, that rest on the stool is going to give him a big boost. Here we go, round number three. Our final round, $100,000 on the line. Oh, yeah. Front kick from Noiiri. You know, he went to the well too many times with that kick, and he got swept. Kubo swept him down. And Kubo gets the second round from our judges. 96-94 overall for Kubo. So we say final round, but this could very well go to a fourth round. Big shots there, Noiri. Oh, and Kubo comes back. Yeah, Kubo's throwing punches in combination. Noiri hasn't been able to come, you know, combine his techniques. Yeah, very busy fighter, Kubo has been. Front kick from Kubo. Under two minutes to go. Fighters have already fought twice tonight. There is a nice left from Noiri. Down goes Noiri. Uh, no knockdown. That was a great shot by Noiri. I, I like I like the way he throws that. It's kind of a hook, but it kind of travels at a downward trajectory. If he could catch Kubo freely with that shot, it may do some damage. Kubo got a front kick through to the body. Fighters break. Oh, high kick there from Norieri. And now Kubo comes back. Delivering a lot of shots. Our referee separates the fighter. We have one minute to go in this glory featherweight slam. Final match. Uh oh. The timeout has been called. Is he giving a warning to both fighters? To both fighters about holding each other in the clinch. A oh, big shot there by Utah Kubo. That just sealed the deal. Noiri went down. Utah Kubo Noiri's trying to end this fight, peppering Noiri now. Noiri's going to really try to do something wild here. He he knows that he's got to score a knockdown, otherwise he lost the fight. That knockdown could be the key body shot from Kubo. 20 seconds to go. So much on the line here in Tokyo. Why? Does Noiri have one last rabbit in his hat? As the third and final round comes to an end. Wow, that's a crazy match, man. 
was a nightmare for Noiri. He gets hit in the groin two times over the course of the evening, then he gets knocked down in the finals. Let's see what the judges say. We can't assume anything, but man. But they're both such, they're both great fighters. Great warriors. We're gonna see a rematch for sure. The we smiling must. sniper, Utah Kubo. With the late knockdown of Noi Erie, that could be the difference in this fight. And what is really has to be frustrating for the young man, Noi Erie, was that if he didn't continue, he won that first round, he would have won the tournament. Yeah, if he, if he would not have been able to continue after that extended break, he would have won the fight. Because it was a split decision uh, verdict by the judges, three to two for for Noeri after round one. Well, it's in the hands of the judges now. So much on the line here in Tokyo. And to make it official, we go up to our ring announcer, Tim Hughes. Well, we check out a replay here of the knockdown, a massive left there delivered by Utah Kubo that floored Masaaki Noiiri. We take a look, bam, right there. And from that angle, did Masaaki Noiiri fall down? Well, it could make a difference in the scoring. Let's find out and go to our ring announcer, Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we send it to the judges scorecard. They give us a score of 146, 134 for your winner. And now Glory Featherweight Slam Tournament World Champion, fighting out of the blue corner. Utah Kubo is your Glory Featherweight Slam World Champion, earning $100,000, and he's standing by with our Steven Quadros. That is probably not the way he wanted it to turn out, is it? This He's really thirsty. Can you get a drink of water first? Okay, what does this mean? What does this win mean to you? Because you've won a number of tournaments. What does this tournament win mean to you? So I did my best with the fights, but I really want to apologize to Noidi for letting it end this way. But he also wants to thank everybody who came out to go see it today. Well, in my opinion, you were probably the two best kickboxers in Japan right now. What do you think the future is going to be like for Ma Masaki Noriri? まさにもう日本で最強のキックボクサーの Says he wanted to say this first, but he wanted to thank his team and everybody who supports him for coming out and helping him do this victory. As far as Noidi goes, he says he's a great fighter in the 65 kilogram class, and I'm sure he'll do fine. 
Congratulations one more time. And now to give you the check and the belt, we have Marcus Luer, one of our executives from Glory Sports International. Congratulations. Senator Manager Marcus Rushikara, Kogitega Watosaremas. So Utah Kubo knocks off three opponents tonight to become the Glory Featherweight Slam World Champion and earned that fat check right there, $100,000. A late knockdown of Masa Aki Noiri earned Utah Kubo the victory. As we check out the latest featherweight rankings, Utah Kubo goes from number two to number one. Masab Amrani, who came into this tournament as number one, falls to two. And Mas Masaaki Nori moves up from eight to number five. I'm a little surprised. I thought he might go up a little bit higher after a game effort by the 19-year-old Nori Iri. I'm with you on that, Ron. I think that uh, Nori, we're going to see a lot of this kid. Seriously. What? What an incredible night here from Glory 8 Tokyo Featherweight Slam from the Arinaki Coliseum from my broadcasting partner Stephen Quadros. I'm Ron Kruk saying sayonara from Tokyo.